Both sharks and skates are cartilaginous fishes, and they both belong to the family of selassians. Over the last few years, there has been an intensive fishing activity of selassians along the coast of Mauritania, Senegal, the Gambia, and Sierra Leone. In the past, those species of fish were not the main targets of fishermen. They were just considered as incidental catch. The first development of the fishing activity because of the growing interest of the Asian market in shark fin is considered to be the main factor of the huge unloading. There is a rising concern with the steady decrease of the shark population today. Given the rising concern brought about by the steady decrease of that species, a sub-regional action plan for the sustainable preservation and management of the shark population has been implemented. This documentary has been realized in that regard. To explain the genesis and the development du projet d'appui à la mise en œuvre du plan sous-régional d'action de conservation et de gestion durable des populations de requins, je veux juste expliquer que la pêche des requins dans la sous-région a débuté vers les années 70 par la Gambie. Et c'était juste pour la consommation locale. C'est après les années 70, avec le développement du marché asiatique de l'aileron, que cette pêche aux requins s'est développée d'abord en Gambie, ensuite dans la sous-région. La Gambie constituant la plaque tournante de cette pêcherie. Mais très tôt, on a compris que cette pêche n'était pas rentable parce que les rendements ont baissé assez vite et aussi la rentabilité économique a baissé très vite. Et ceci s'explique aisément par le fait que ces espèces ont une une croissance assez lente et une fécondité très faible. Face à cette situation, la Commission sous-régionale de pêche a sollicité l'appui de la Fondation internationale du Bandarguen, la FIBA, pour réfléchir sur une stratégie de conservation des populations de requins. Cette stratégie s'est traduite par le plan d'action sous-régionale de conservation des populations de requins. Et la CCP qui a adhéré donc, depuis 1999 au plan international d'action requin de la FAO a adopté par ses États membres le plan d'action qu'il a développé avec l'appui de la FIBA. Et depuis 2004, ce plan est mis en œuvre par la Commission sur de pêche avec l'appui technique et financier de la Fondation internationale de Pandarbe. Ce plan d'action à trois objectifs principaux. D'abord, développer des stratégies de, de, de production d'outils d'aide à la gestion de la population de requins. Deuxièmement, réfléchir sur un programme pilote de reconversion des acteurs dans la sous-région, étant donné que cette question n'est pas rentable. Troisièmement, valoriser et consolider les acquis des projets par un effort de capitalisation et de communication. Here we are in Mauritania, 65 kilometers far from Nouakchott. This makeshift camp mainly shelters Senegalese fishermen. At daybreak, the fishermen set the sail to the high seas. The experienced Senegalese fishermen sail straight to the West African coast to exploit the sea resources. Here they find themselves separated from their families, eager to catch sharks. They use nets to catch this great predator. They land ashore late in the afternoon and unload their catches along the beach. According to them, they made a good catch. They have caught several hammerhead sharks. Other fishermen were not that lucky. They only got the small fry. Others. The precious fins are slid up at first before being dried. They are intended for the Asian market. 
The bowels of the sharks are ripped open so as to be salted and dried. Usually, young or almost fully developed sharks are found within their mother's belly. This shows how the population of sharks decreases owing to the impact of bad fishing practices. The weak reproduction potential of these fishes is also another explanation. They are a slow reproducing species. Their sexual development is slow in coming. To some of them, it often takes 10 years to get fully developed. The incubating period is nine months. Then there is the fertility rate, which is too low. Most of the female sharks cannot bear more than eight baby sharks, but hammerhead sharks can bear a dozen. Compared to the sardines, which lay over 10,000 eggs a year, these figures are laughable. For instance, if you take the 20 centimeter long sardine, we have 4,500 eggs a year. And if you take the 30 centimeter long sardine, we have 120,000 eggs a year. Along the West African coast, female sharks are caught all year long, even during the incubating season. While killing adult sharks, fishermen are unnecessarily killing the lineage of those predators, the skeleton of which is left along the beach. And yet, this lineage is important for the renewal of the population. Here is, for example, the incubating female. If she is caught before giving birth, there won't be any lineage to renew the population and ensure the future of sharks. On the other hand, if the female shark manages to give birth before it gets caught, then baby sharks that are left in the sea will ensure the renewal of the population. Once they get fully developed, they can in turn reproduce before they got caught. In such a way, the future of fishing is secured. This example shows how important it is to stop catching incubating female sharks. It would be much better if fishermen were only allowed to catch female sharks that have already given birth more than twice. When it comes to incubating and for good management of the livestock, we recommend not to kill a young incubating shark. Islam strongly prohibits the killing of pregnant creatures. The same thing applies to the cattle. And sharks being animals, Muslim fishermen should avoid to catch incubating females. Once the bowels are ripped open, the shark skeleton are cut up. The huge slices of shark meat are then soaked in salt in the vat and then exposed under the sun. This type of meat is hardly eaten in Senegal. It will be sold at less than 1,000 francs CFA by kilogram and exported to Ghana, Guinea, or Burkina Faso. On the other hand, the kilogram of dried fins will be sold at a much higher price. Fins are the most important component of the shark. Shark fishing actors unanimously acknowledge that they are facing several problems. More and more losses of selations are reported along the West African coast. The big species are seen as the most vulnerable. For instance, the sole fish, which is 5 meters long, can hardly be found along the Mauritanian, Senegalese, and Gambian coast. The death rate of the big species is way too high, and at the same time, there is no renewal of the population. Which is really sad if you know that as a symbol of power, 
This fish is carved on the small coins and Frank CFA bills. Its disappearance is certainly a huge loss for these countries in terms of cultural heritage. It's high time to set up laws in the local areas to protect endangered Salatian species such as sawfish. African countries must work together in order to have these species mentioned in the Annex 1 of Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora so as to stop their marketing in the international level. But it is absolutely essential to abide by the laws on fishing at both national and international level. The Salatians' disappearance is a real threat for the other species targeted by the fishermen. In the sea, some fishes live on seaweed. These fishes are in turn eaten by stronger species, which are eventually eaten by the Salatians. Such a succession of predation is called food chain. Those which are on top of the chain, such as the Salatians, are called the great predators. They keep the balance between different sea bodies. Scientists have shown that the loss of Salatians is likely to bring about the decreasing of the population of noble fishes, which will then be replaced by fishes of lesser value, the population size of which is going to explode. We can take the example of sharks which feed on a species of fish in which fishermen are not interested, like young fishes of a different type. Once they develop, these young fishes are caught by fishermen. As a result of the vanishing of the shark population, species of less interest come out as there is no more predator. The number of young fishes from species of lesser interest will decrease as there will be more predators. The mature fishes belonging to these species will diminish to the detriment of fishermen. We are here in Dakar Harbor. These canals come for some ice before going to sea for many days. Compared to the means of the trawlers which surround them, the small-scale fishermen's tools are nothing. But in 2003, there were about 15,000 traditional canals for an industrial fleet of about 300 ships. Both the numerous traditional boats and the well-equipped ones are held responsible for the scarcity of sea resources. When it comes to fishing, there is no sustainable supplies management policy in Senegal. Even though there are laws, they are not respected. Fishermen do not care whatsoever about what they catch, how they catch it, and where and when they catch it. Traditional fishermen and Asian longliners indulge in fishing sharks. Unfortunately, we're not able to get either pictures or information about them. For the trawlers, sharks are seen as incidental catch. These fishermen are longliners, specializing in shark fishing. As a sacrifice, they poured out milk in quest of the sea's blessing. At last, the long line fishermen reach their fishing spot after sailing for a day. The depth is beyond 1,000 meters. It is a favorite territory for the pelagic species. The long line fishermen angle 20 meters deep in the sea. The long lines can measure more than 10 kilometers. Along every 20 meters, a hook and a bait are fastened on the steel line. Bon, j'entraîne de, de faire mon, mon truc là pour attirer le poisson. Quoi. Je vais mettre du miel avec du sel. 
On va le mettre comme ça. Bon, je, je, vais, le, je vais le mettre dans les cales et dans le, la cale du, du filet. Mais tu as quelque chose à, à parler avant de mettre le qui Ah oui. Hein? Ok. Hmm? Grâce à Dieu, on va nous aider. The long line had to stay in the same place all night long. Watching the long line fishermen spend the whole night in the canoe with no bed, no comfort at all, one can easily understand how daunting their job is. This morning, the fishermen are lucky. They can hardly lift their fishing line, which means that they have made a good catch. Several macro sharks are taken and put in the canoe. Some of these species are three meters long and weigh more than 100 kilograms. This one puts up a fierce resistance to the fisherman. This other shark dies of suffocation, so it only opposes the weight of its dead body to the fisherman. The fishes are kept into ice in order to be sold in a fresh state. Now we are in Casamance. Salatian fishermen from many West African countries have settled down in this green region located in the south of Senegal. We are in the Elinkin Harbour. These fishermen are patching up their nets, which are used to catch selations. <laughs> Sometimes, fishermen spend 20 days at sea. They also specialize in fish processing. They store huge amounts of salt on board. The fins are sliced while at sea and the shark skeletons preserved into the salt.
Once back to the harbor, other fish processors will take care of the skeletons. The conditioning is quite questionable. Some skeletons are in a state of putrefaction. The big slices of shark meat are salted and dried. Afterwards, they're transported to Guinea, Ghana, or Burkina Faso. Many Ghanaians have mainly settled down in this Senegalese region and in the Gambia so as to fish and process the Celasians. The Ghanaian fishermen deal solely in shark fishing. When we get a fish too, we salt it and export it to Ghana for consumption. At first we were in Gambia, by then the fish were many in Gambia waters. But now we go up to Sierra Leone, we go up to even up to Liberia before you can get a shark now. First time it was abandoned, but now just few. So you have to go far. Those days we spent only two days to get shark. But now we get 20 days, 20 days before you can get 20 sharks or 10 sharks. Yeah, so now shark fishing has become very difficult now. Well, you know, before boats were not many. Boats were not many. A uh, few boats were fishing that time. But now everybody has seen that there's money in the sea. So boats are getting rapid. They are developing a lot of boats, a lot, a lot now. At first, uh, we Ghanaians, we were having about only 7 to 20 boats. But now we have about 140 boats. Yeah. So because of the much boats, that's why the fishing has limit. Past, the fish were many. Present is just few. So in future, I don't think we will get even. We won't get sharks. Because previous, present is not the same. So I know future is going to be terrible. How to effectively address these threats on skates and sharks? One of the best solutions that can be found is to delineate protected sea areas. Let's look at this chart. This is an area filled with rotten sharks. If intensive fishing is developed in this area, chances are that this species is going to vanish in the near future. The fisherman can stop fishing in this area by delineating a protected sea area marked by beacons. In so doing, the population of sharks will increase. Some of them will spread and reproduce in the neighboring areas. Once a good development cycle for a fish species is implemented, then it is a foregone conclusion that the future of fishing in the neighboring areas will be guaranteed. In 2003, the Bambung community has been created by fishermen in the delta of Saloum in Senegal. The 7,000 hectares protected sea area is managed by villagers. In 2006, the number of fish species had highly increased and the local fishermen made good catches. When it comes to fishing, the bamboo case illustrates that only local laws are respected. Created by the Mauritanian government in 1976, the National Park of Ban d'Arguin is seen as a reproduction and fostering area to many species. There are nine villages in the park's neighborhood. But in the late 80s, the Imraguans focused on fishing skates and sharks, with the growing interest of the international market and local merchants. Such an activity threatened the Salasian population living in the park. The park management decided to compensate those fishermen 
by paying them back the price of the nets for Salatian fishing. All the nets have been destroyed. In 2003, the Imraguans committed themselves to giving up fishing skates and sharks. From that moment, the park has become the most protected sea area of the Salatian in the Atlantic. But some issues must be addressed. Especially young Salatians are incidentally caught while fishing other fishes. In addition, sharks are known to be migratory species. Through this example, these sharks leave the protected sea area, which is at the same time their incubating area. At the end of their migration, these sharks swim back in order to reproduce. But if they are caught before coming back, the protected sea area will not fulfill its function as an area for reproduction and growth to these species. The creation of the protected sea area must come with the global control of Salatian fishing. Thanks to the help of CITS, all the countries involved will have to commit themselves to controlling the international trade on products stemming from Salatians. It's time for fishermen to adopt lasting rules and learn the best practices in fishing. To do so, laws governing fishing must be decentralized. Now we are sailing towards the Kamza Harbour in Guinea. Fishermen from Senegal, Ghana and other African countries have settled in this area in order to catch sharks. Women use boiled sea water to produce salt that is then put on the Salatians. It is striking to see the number of young sharks which are unloaded. These sharks have been caught even before they develop to produce. The fishing of both young and incubating females results into a sharp decrease of Salatian stocks. If fishermen want to catch sharks in the future, then they will have to stop this practice now. Watching at the processing, we notice that almost fully developed young sharks are extracted from their mother's bowels. Contrary to what we have seen in Mauritania, where the embryo is left along the beach, here it is collected and then processed. This explains why this species is making itself scarce in West Africa. Now the question is, do we have to wait till the last shark's embryo is processed before its birth to set up rules to be applied by all fishermen for a sustainable exploitation of Salatians? <laughs>